Okay, so let's continue in the next part here. Uh, example of inverter buffer staging. So, um, so for all the four examples, okay, we have the four example there. Um, uh, all of them has the same uh, F. Okay, all, all have the same F. Uh, so what is our F here? So our big F, okay, the big F is 64 um, CG1 divided by CG1 equals to 64. Okay, so in all cases, um, we know that the, um, uh, the effective uh, delay, uh, delay factor on the line is, is 64. Okay, and, and, and what's the difference if we put uh, one, uh, what, what is our delay if we put one inverter, two inverters, three and, and, and four inverters. Okay, so if, if we put one inverter in the first case, um, um, so so we, we, we already know that the size of the first inverter is size one. Okay, um, the, uh, so, so this CG1 is, is uh, um, size one we can assume that uh, this is a factor, okay, uh, not, not in terms of ferret, okay, not, not in terms of capacitance in ferret, <laughs> um, but more of a factor. So, uh, a size one here, you can assume that maybe the, the gate capacitance is, is uh, I mean, the size of the PMOS and MOS ratio is 2 to 1, okay. Um, okay, so, so if we have a big F, um, so what is our our small f? We can calculate our small f and, and, and our delay. So our delay here, TP zero, is it, uh, so it's TP. So 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 TP is TP zero one plus um, the the small f. Okay. So in in this case, um, our small f is equals to. Um, um, C extrinsic over C gate, so it's, it's, it's basically equals to 64, okay? And, and, and therefore our TP equals to 65 TP0, okay? Um, so so in, in the first case, we have um, um, our, our propagation delay is, is 65 TP0. Okay, so what about the second one? Um, so in the, in the second one, we have um, uh, two, uh, uh, two, two, two inverters. Okay, I think I think we will make here. So um, so our big F is, is still sixty four. Okay, and and two inverters. So our F is is the square root of sixty four. Okay, for each uh, for each uh, the F for each inverter is the square root of sixty four, and this is equals to um, just quickly calculate here the square root of sixty four is equals to eight. Okay, and um, so, so, so if, if, if fi equals to 8, um, okay, so this is, uh, um, this is gate 1 and gate, gate 2, okay, so, so f1 and f2 both equals to 8, and, 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 and we know that um, f equals to um, cl f2, eh? so f2 equals to um, cl over cg2, okay, and, and this one is equals to um, 8. Okay, uh, and, and, and CL is equal to 64. So then your CG2 is equal to 64 divided by 8 equals to 8. So that's why um, we have uh, the, the, size, uh, um, the size of gate 2 there is, is equal to 8. Okay, um, and then uh, CG1, okay, CG1 uh, is equal to um, CG2 over uh, CG1. Okay, uh, so, um, uh, uh, sorry, so, so CG1 is equal to CG2 over F, okay, because, because F, F is equal to CG, um, F is equal to CG2 over CG1, um, so, so CG1 is, is CG2 over F, and CG2, um, uh, CG2 is equal to 8, and then uh, this is equals to um, uh, your, your f your f is equals to eight. Okay, um, here we get we get our f here equals to eight. So your CG one is equals to one, which is uh, correct. Okay, <coughs> so so we proved that already. Um, so what is our what is our our TP? Um, what is our TP? So so our TP is 
uh, TP0 and um, uh, 1 plus uh, F1 plus TP0 1 plus F2 and here is equals to um, TP0 um, uh, so 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 this is actually um, uh, 18 eh? so so this is uh, 1 plus F so it's a, it's a 9 plus 9 so equals to TP0 18 okay so so we can see that um, um, the total delay here is actually 18 TP0 and here is 65 TP0 so uh, if you use uh, one inverter if you use one inverter Okay, we get uh, uh, the delay of 65 TP0 and if you use T inverter and we use the correct sizing, uh, we should get, be able to get uh, a much better speed, less delay, which is 18 TP0. Okay, so let, 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 let's see the solution. Um, let's just uh, go back here, discard. Okay, so we can see here, that uh, we calculated already um, that we have 18 okay um, we have a delay of 18 uh, using two inverters we have a delay of 65 using one inverter so so obviously using two inverters is faster and um, and and here um, your, your your f here is your f for each gate eh? so so here is your f here is equals to 64 okay f1 is 8 f2 is equals to 8 okay um, so you have the delay for each one. Um, so 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 in the end, it's eight plus eight plus two, uh, TP zero. Okay. Uh, so in in the next one, if you do the same, okay. Uh, if you do the same, you are going to get F here equals to four. So F one equals to four, F two equals to four, F three equals to four, and then it's four times three plus three. Okay. Um, and and you get fifteen. Five plus five plus five. Uh, 15 so that's your total delay um, so 15 um, times TP0 okay here here TP times times uh, times TP0 and you get F equals to 4 with three stages okay and you do the same you can you can get here 15.3 and we can see that um, um, we get the 3 as our our optimum optimum n optimum n Okay, optimum number of inverters. Because if you go more, if you go more than three, if you put four, then your delay is fifteen point three. Okay. Um, if you put two, you get delay of eighteen. So if you want to get the best delay, um, you want to put uh, three uh, three inverters in the chain uh, to get the best delay. But sometimes, remember, we don't want to get the best delay. Uh, for example, in, if you want to optimize the whole time, you want to have your circuit slower. Then, you know, you might want to put just one inverter. Uh, and, not, and not too too much because if you put too much, um, if you put if you put really a lot, then maybe you have more delay. Um, but if you put an optimum size like uh, the optimum end like number three, then you get a good um, um, you get you get a good delay. So so here remember we can use also L and F, okay. Um, so you can estimate uh, L and F. So if you go L and um, uh, sixty four. Uh, so if we, if, we, if we quickly do uh, ln64, we get around uh, 4. Um, but if you do uh, 0.8, um, okay, you get, you get, you get 3.3. Yeah? Okay, let, let, let's use 0 0.8. Okay, gamma equals to 1. 0 0.8, uh, this, this equals to 3.3. .3, okay, so um, optimum n is equals to 3. So, so we, can, we can estimate... Uh, we can estimate, uh, you know, based on the um, our big F CL over CG one, we can estimate uh, the optimum n by just using 0.8 ln ln F, okay, 3.3. Okay, so let's see the impact of buffer staging for large CL. Um, so, so what is your if your big F is is equals to 10,000, 1,000, um, which, which is uh, quite practical if you have a big design. And your output is driving a large number of uh, gates, and um, and and here your CL is huge, uh, ten thousand or one thousand, and um, what's the difference if you don't put any unbuffered is is no um, no uh, inverters. What happens if you have no inverters? 
what happens if you have uh, two inverters and this is the optimized uh, uh, inverter chain uh, using the LN, the point A LNF uh, formula equation? Okay, um, so so let's look at the first one here. So if you have your uh, your big F equals to ten, uh, unbuffered is uh, eleven TP zero, and a two stage chain you can calculate. Uh, so so how do we get eight point three? So um, you need you need to calculate uh, the square root of ten um, to get the small f. Okay, um, for the first one. Um, so um, the, the the square root the square root of ten to get the small f. So if you if you take the the square root of of, of ten, you will get uh, three point three point one six. Okay, and um, your 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 delay now tp one is tp zero one plus. Um, Okay, so, so 1 plus 3.16 Okay, and then TP2 is also the same TP0, 1 plus 3.16 And therefore your TP is TP1 plus TP2 Is equals to TP0 um, Yeah, so, so it should be around 8.3 Okay, so, so this is uh, using, using two inverter chain Okay, using, using two inverter chains uh, We just take the square root Okay, um, but if you if you do optimize one, if you do optimize one, you need to um, uh, find the the LNF, LNF, and then uh, your F is equal to the root of n of F. Okay, um, once you find once you find n, uh, you can find the individual F for each of your inverter, and then you can find it. So from here we can see that um, the optimize and the two stays the same for a small number of for, for a small load. Okay, so for a small load, two stage works. But as the load gets bigger, um, for example, in the extreme case, okay, in the in the extreme case um, that your load is ten thousand, then um, for for the two stage is is basically a, a square root of of ten thousand. Your f your small f is is square root of ten thousand. So if you take the square root of of, of, of 10,000 equals to 100 okay um, so then your your TP is TP0 uh, 101 plus 101 so equals to 202 TP0 okay um, but but if you use um, if you use the optimized chain okay um, if you use the optimized chain um, you can find that n is equals to um, 0.8 uh, ln f is equals to um, ln of 10,000 times 0.8, 7.4. Okay, so let's say this is uh, 7. So you have 7 inverters and then you can find your small f is equals to the root of 7 of 10,000. Okay, so this one is... Um, um, 10,000 to the power of 1 over 7 and you should get around 3.7 okay so 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 the delay factor for each inverter and remember now we have uh, seven eh? so we have seven inverter chains and each one uh, you can you can you can actually calculate this and and, and you should get uh, uh, these, these values okay uh, using the small f and then you get your your TP and TP, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the TP of each inverter and you get the TP for the whole thing. Okay, so um, impressive speed up. So what, what, what we can conclude from here is that if you have a, a large fan out, a large CL, you're driving a large CL, then you want, and, and, and you need a, a fast, um, you need a fast um, uh, response, uh, delay, uh, less delay on the line. So you don't want to, you, do, you need the inverters. Okay, you need inverters, uh, maybe because your line is long, and you have a, a big wire capacitance, for example. Um, so a big, a big wire capacitance uh, will give a big CL, big load capacitance. So you don't want to um, not you, you want to put uh, the inverter chains on the line, and 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 you want to use the optimized inverter chain to get the best delay. Okay, so I think that's it. I'm going to skip uh, the next few slides. Uh, the input signal rise and fall time. I'm going to skip this one. 
design challenge, uh, gate never, never design isolation. This is an important concept here. This performance is impacted by the fan out and the driving strength of the gate feeding its input. So uh, we never design a gate by itself. It's always going to drive something. Okay, uh, it, it might drive an output port, it might drive uh, several other gates. And uh, how do you size them? Which, which, uh, how you pick the size depends on, on really what you are driving. Okay, uh, delay with long interconnect. So as I mentioned, um, we have the uh, capacitance on the wire which cannot be ignored anymore. Um, but still using the same concept, the same equation. If you have a capacitance on the wire and you want to include that, you have to include it in the load capacitance um, equation. Okay, along with the diffusion and also the gate capacitance. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Well, we finished with this chapter. Um, so in the next one, we'll, we'll cover the logical effort technique, basically uh, an extension of this technique um, uh, to optimize the delay for, for more complex uh, gates, uh, such as the NAND gates, the NOR gates, uh, and so on and so on.